Sure, here's a list of 50 important ASP.NET interview questions along with their answers as of 2023. 1. What is ASP.NET? ASP.NET is a web development framework developed by Microsoft for building dynamic web applications, websites, and web services. 2. What are the different types of ASP.NET authentication? ASP.NET supports forms authentication, Windows authentication, and passport authentication. 3. Explain the ASP.NET page lifecycle. The ASP.NET page lifecycle consists of stages such as initialization, load view state, load postback data, page load, validation, postback event handling, rendering, and unload. 4. What is view state in ASP.NET? View state is used to persist the state of controls across postbacks. It's a client-side state management technique. 5. What is the difference between ASP.NET Web Forms and ASP.NET MVC? Web Forms is an event-driven programming model, while MVC is based on the model view controller pattern, providing better separation of concerns. 6. Explain the concept of master pages in ASP.NET. Master pages allow you to create a consistent layout for the pages in your application by defining a common structure. 7. What is the global.asax file used for? Global.asax is used to handle application-level events and manage application-wide variables. 8. What is the purpose of the app underscore code folder in ASP.NET? The app underscore code folder is used to store source code files, classes, business logic, etc. that are automatically compiled and made available to the application. 9. Explain the role of the globalization and localization in ASP.NET. Globalization involves designing and developing applications that work with different cultures and regions. Localization is adapting an application for a specific culture or region. 10. What is ASP.NET AJAX and what are its advantages? ASP.NET AJAX is a set of extensions to ASP.NET for building rich and interactive web applications. It provides features like partial page rendering and client-side services. 11. What is the purpose of the using statement in c -sharp? The using statement is used to define a scope at the end of which an object will be disposed of. 12. Explain the difference between server, transfer and response, redirect. Server, transfer transfers control from one page to another on the server side, while response, redirect sends a redirect message to the browser, causing a round trip. 13. What is the role of the web.config file in ASP.NET? Web.config is a configuration file that stores settings for an ASP.NET application. It includes settings for the application, connection strings, authentication, and more. 14. Describe the ASP.NET security features. ASP.NET provides features like forms authentication, role-based security, URL authorization, and membership and profile providers for enhanced security. 15. What is an HTTP handler in ASP.NET? An HTTP handler is a component that processes requests for specific types of files, allowing you to create custom handling for different file types. 16. What is the purpose of the app underscore data folder in ASP.NET? The app underscore data folder is used to store application-specific data, such as databases or other data files. 17. Explain the concept of code behind in ASP.NET. Code behind is a programming model where the code is separate from the content. In ASP.NET, the UI is defined in an .aspx file, and the code is in a separate .cs or .vb file. 18. What is the role of the compilation section in the web.config file? The compilation section in web.config specifies how ASP.NET should compile and build the application, including settings for debugging, batch compilation, etc. 19. What are ASP.NET Web API and its key features? ASP.NET Web API is a framework for building HTTP services. It supports RESTful principles and is used to build APIs that can be consumed by various clients. 20. What is the role of the at register directive in ASP.NET? The at register directive is used to register a user control or a custom control on an ASP.NET page. 21. What is the difference between server-side validation and client-side validation? Server-side validation is performed on the server after the data is submitted, while client-side validation is performed on the client's browser using JavaScript before submitting the form to the server. 22. How does ViewState work, and what are its advantages and disadvantages? ViewState is used to persist data between postbacks. Advantages include simplicity, while disadvantages include increased page size and potential security risks. 
23. What is an ASP.NET HTTP module? An HTTP module is a custom class that can be used to extend the functionality of the ASP.NET pipeline. It can intercept requests and responses to perform additional processing. 24. Explain the role of the application underscore start and session underscore start events in global.asacs. Application underscore start is triggered when the application is first started, and session underscore start is triggered when a new session is created. 25. What is the purpose of the global.asacs application underscore error event? Application underscore error is an event in global.asacs that is triggered when an unhandled error occurs in the application, allowing for custom error handling. 26. How can you secure sensitive data, such as connection strings, in a web.config file? You can use the all connection strings section in web.config and encrypt the sensitive information using the aspnet underscore regis tool. 27. Explain the concept of dependency injection in ASP.NET. Dependency injection is a design pattern where the dependencies of a class are injected from the outside, making the code more modular and testable. 28. What are web services, and how are they different from web API? Web services are based on SOAP and use XML for message exchange, while web API is based on RESTful principles and typically uses JSON for data exchange. 29. What is the purpose of the location element in web.config? The location element is used to specify configuration settings for a particular directory or URL. 30. How can you implement caching in ASP.NET? Caching in ASP.NET can be implemented using the output cache directive HTTP context to cache or by using the system runtime caching namespace. 31. Explain the role of the connection pooling in ASP.NET. Connection pooling is a technique where database connections are reused rather than opened and closed for each request, improving performance. 32. What is the purpose of the jQuery library in ASP.NET? jQuery is a popular JavaScript library that simplifies client-side scripting in HTML. It is often used for AJAX requests and DOM manipulation. 33. What is the significance of the compilation A element in web.config? The compilation A element in web.config is used to configure how ASP.NET compiles and builds the application. 34. How can you implement cross-site scripting, XSS, protection in ASP.NET? You can use output encoding, validate input, and use the anti-XSS library to prevent XSS attacks. 35. What is the role of the response output write method in ASP.NET? Response output write is used to directly write content to the output stream, allowing for dynamic generation of HTML or other content. 36. Explain the concept of AJAX and how it is implemented in ASP.NET. AJAX, Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, is a technique for creating dynamic and interactive web applications by making asynchronous requests to the server. ASP.NET AJAX provides server controls and scripts to simplify AJAX development. 37. What is the purpose of the globalization and culture settings in web.config? Globalization and culture settings in web.config allow you to specify the default culture and UI culture for an application, affecting how numbers, dates, and other localized content are displayed. 38. How can you enable and configure session state in ASP.NET? Session state can be enabled and configured in a session state element in web.config, specifying the storage mode and other settings. 39. Explain the role of the data grid control in ASP.NET. The data grid control is used to display data in a tabular format with features like sorting, paging, and editing. 40. What is the role of the validate request property in ASP.NET? The validate request property is used to control whether the ASP.NET runtime should validate input for potential script or HTML injection attacks. 41. How can you implement custom error pages in ASP.NET? Custom error pages can be implemented by configuring the customer's element in web.config and specifying the error pages for different HTTP status codes. 42. Explain the differences between GET and POST requests in ASP.NET. GET requests pass parameters in the URL, visible to users, while POST requests pass parameters in the request body, making them more secure for sensitive data. 43. What is the purpose of the ViewStateMAC property in ASP.NET? ViewStateMAC is a security feature that adds a message authentication code to the ViewState, preventing tampering with the client-side state. 44. How can you implement role-based security in ASP.NET? 
Role-based security can be implemented using the authorization A element in web.config and by assigning roles to users. 45. What is the difference between temp data and view data in ASP.NET MVC? Temp data is used to pass data between controller actions during a single request, while view data is used to pass data from the controller to the view. 46. Explain the purpose of the using statement in C Sharp. The using statement is used for resource management, automatically disposing of objects that implement the iDisposable interface when they go out of scope. 47. How does routing work in ASP.NET MVC? Routing in ASP.NET MVC maps URLs to controller actions, allowing for clean and SEO-friendly URLs. 48. What is the role of the Entity Framework in ASP.NET? The Entity Framework is an Object Relational Mapping ORM, framework in ASP.NET that allows developers to work with databases using .NET objects. 48. What is the role of the Entity Framework in ASP.NET? The Entity Framework is an Object Relational Mapping ORM, framework in ASP.NET that allows developers to work with databases using .NET objects. 49. How can you implement custom authentication in ASP.NET? Custom authentication can be implemented by creating a custom authentication module or using the ASP.NET Identity Framework to customize authentication logic. 50. Explain the concept of dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. Dependency injection in ASP.NET Core is built into the framework and is used to inject dependencies into a class or method, making the application more modular and testable. It is typically configured in the startup class using the built-in container.